Tikin Dashan Sokong, Kong, Monkey God and Monkey King, could travel as far as the 108,000 Li in just one somersault. Nicholas too has come a long way. Join me in this final part of the three-part series as we embark on a journey with Nicholas from the start to where he is now, as well as Bao De Gong in Singapore. So I remember asking um, Nicholas how he felt when he was, um, you know, during a trans session um, at Si Tian Dashan. And he described it as being um, in a deep sleep sort of state. Um, and um, when he wakes up um, from the um, spirit medium, uh, um, you know, with the Dangi session or with the spring medium procession of his body, um, he actually feels a little bit tired and he can't quite uh, remember or recall, you know, what went through or what went on or what, what he said or did. So it's basically like in a really loud, comfortable, um, deep dreamlike state or deep sleep state is what he has described to me. Nicholas has also mentioned that he doesn't actually um, and encounter or find um, huge difficulty in terms of juggling, um, you know, different roles he's playing in, in his life at the moment. So, you know, he's got his personal life uh, with his family and friends, um, him as an employee, employee uh, as a financial consultant, as well as him uh, being Qi Tian Dashan's uh, voice, his body as a vessel. Um, so he actually said that uh, just being, you know, him being in this financial consultant uh, role, um, he's able to arrange his appointments uh, with his clients um, and also, you know, he's able to work the schedule around um, in favour of the clients as well as for himself. Um, so he said, um, you know, being a spirit medium um, is a lifetime commitment and um, you know his job is not only to sit around waiting for a spiritual um, consult to happen or waiting for god to possess them he, he actually mentioned this that's a lot of um there's a lot of front and uh back end type of uh work that has to be done so what you see is on the front end you know um Dangi or, or, or Tina Dashan, you know, sitting there waiting to have consultation sessions with his uh, um, worshippers and devotees. But on the back end, there's lots of heavy operation work that he has to, um, you know, work around and, and prepare and do. So, you know, he cited an example. So on the 2nd and the 16th of each lunar month, um, his Sintua actually hosts um, a ritual called Kokun. So uh, Kokun is a ritual to actually uh, renew um, or sorry, to reward the armies um, of, you know, the respective gods for their hard work. Um, so it's like a payday um, for the armies. And uh, for him, he will actually cook and prepare all the food dishes himself. And because he's, you know, his parents have to work, he's the one who does all the cooking, prepping, probably going to the market, buying all the ingredients to do so as well. Um, Nicholas then did, you know, proceed to let me know that, you know, if he is a, you know, a regular 8.30 to 5 or 9 to 5 uh, employer, um, employee, sorry, and then, you know, so then he's unable to do any of these preparation work or anything like that. He's not able to prepare kokun, um, you know, marketing, cooking, um, you know, setting up the table for offerings and things like that. He's, he's not able to juggle both, you know, the Sintua as well as as work as a final show consultant. But um, you know, he stressed that just because he's got this line of work is actually very flexible. Um, so it allows him to be able to do so. Um, Nicholas stresses that, you know, traditions are meant to be passed down from generation to generation. So if he doesn't uphold the generation, it will actually be lost in time. Um, so for him he'll try his best to follow the traditional way. Um, of Kokun and doing it on a fixed date, which is the 2nd to 16th of the lunar month. So um, Nicholas has shared this other sentiment with me, is that um, sadly to say he thinks that his generation will be the last of these spirit mediums or Dangi, because uh, being a spirit medium, it's a lifetime commitment. So it's not like a short term contract that you could sign up with the deity, you know, I just want to be a Dangi 
and help you for three months or six months or nine months or maybe alternate days or things like that. It's not. It's a 24-7 lifetime commitment of a relationship. Um, you know, he's also said that, uh, you know, things will change with time uh, along the way, but with a positive mindset um, and being a righteous person, um, he thinks that, you know, him as a person would walk till the end of the road, uh, being as a spirit medium and being of service um, to Gyuse, you know, um, for the uh, worshippers and dev devotees who come to him. Nicholas also did say that, you know, apart from the hardship, of being, you know, in the lifetime uh, commitment as a spirit medium donkey, many people tend to uh, not receive support from their parents um, about on, you know, being a medium uh, because, you know, being a medium or being a, you know, donkey, the um, person actually needs to seek approval from their ancestors as well. So uh, if either one side does not disapprove, so either the ancestor or the parents do not disapprove. Um, even um, sometimes the deities have to give way, um, which means that uh, if you know the ancestor says no or, or dad or mom says no, the deity will have to back off and not um, actually choose uh, this person as a spokesperson or a body as a vessel for uh, him or her. Um, so um, he said, uh, you know, with the current uh, environment that we all grow up in, um, people, you know, always think that spirit mediums um, are low-class people, illiterate, you know, hang gangsters, hooligans, people who can't hold a job, you know, and drug addicts or things like that. Um, and, e you know, even if people are chosen to be a medium, um, th you know, they're so scared that they actually tend to avoid that situation. So, um, you know, in, in a way they, they, they think that, you know, I, I try not to, um, you know, just I guess in a way to say is that just because there's such a bad um, impression or image of being a spirit medium and the person who's being chosen by a deity to be a spirit medium doesn't, doesn't want to fall in that image, um, they actually tend to try to avoid being a spirit medium or, or do it half-heartedly um, or they just refuse to do it and then suffer the consequences of not doing so. So with Nicholas, I botched um, the uh, very sensitive subject. Actually, I, I I asked him on you know TB toes whether is this something you know a question that I could ask and, and Nicholas being you know gracious person he he actually agreed to answer. Um, my question for him was um, about self modification. So you can see that you know a lot of uh, donkey during trances they do self modify, uh, sorry modificate themselves in terms of like slicing their tongue, collecting the blood on like the gim tua, you know, as good luck for and then passing it on to the devotees, or you know they be hitting their backs like with a uh, sharp spike, um, you know, like knives or round ball with spikes or things like that. So I discussed, you know, with Nicholas is, is self modification. Um, you know, it is it turns out sometimes it's, it's such a fanfare at the moment. Um, and he said that self modification is actually um, an act, uh, a spiritual act between the deities and the spiritual world. So it's never for you know an entertainment purpose. It's it's not for show. It's not a fanfare of some sort. So um, Nicholas strongly believes that tradition are assets that money can never buy. Um, and he said that if you're paid, um, you know, as a tangi to engage in self-modification, that what difference does it make you from being, you know, a clown, an actor or an entertainer? So, you know, when a temple or a sintua um, has a feast day, there are lots of, um, you know, factors that come to play and into consideration. Um, you know, with the planning stage of things. So, um, you know, by doing this, he actually hopes to attract more devotees, you know, by, by engaging social media for his sintua um, and, you know, doing um, Facebook updates and things like that. So he's trying to, you know, engage and um, probably find um, um, solace with, with, you know, the, the new age millennials that, you know, probably will be able to embrace um, with his beliefs and thoughts and, and things that he wants to do. Um, so uh, he also thinks that, you know, like if, if he does a lot of um, work for the temple or the Sintua, um, then it also helps uh, raise his funds for the Sintua or the temple as well. Um, and at the end of the day, um, you know, 
he will never forget what is his mission that he set out to do. His motto and his principles are very important to him. Um, and sometimes, you know, since he can't control what, you know, others think of him or what they think of what he does, um, he can only constantly remind himself not to follow in the footsteps of those who have gone um, sidetracked or, or wayward and, and, you know, out of the way. So if he maintains his integrity of being a good spirit medium and donkey, then, you know, he'll be doing justice um, to the mission that he's been chosen to do. So uh, the other topic that uh, Nicholas and I have discussed is about um, the uh, role or the purpose um, or what the devotee or worshipper is trying to achieve during a consultation session with a spirit medium or dangi. So he says, you know, when a devotee or worshipper actually uh, seeks a consultation session with dangi, they're trying to achieve uh, two things. Um, and these is first as an answer or solution um, to um, the um, problems or inquiries that they have. So during the consultation session, the deities will tell stories, um, write a face, uh, sorry, write a phrase or a poem of some sort um, to remind us as hu human beings or mortals w of what is right and wrong to do. Um, so sometimes also, um, you know, devotees or worshippers do seek um, the uh, con during the consultation session with the deity to cure um, a sickness or, or, or issue of some sort. So not only, um, you know, they need a, um, uh, you know, Nicholas will need a physical item. So in this case, like a medication or as well as to perform a special ritual for the person who is not well. Um, but also to provide a, a form of mental support or guidance for the worshipper and devotee as well. So, um, you know, Nicholas said, you know, the, the third kind of uh, devotees or worshippers who come around to uh, seek the uh, deities during consultation session uh, is these devotees would just like to come around. Um, sometimes they're not to ask for anything, so they're not here to ask for support guidance or, or you know, if they've got sickness to treat or a question or problem to solve. Um, they're just here to listen to the stories that the, div that the deity actually has to tell. Thank you for actually watching um, the first two, which is the uh, beginning as well as the challenge. And um, Nicholas wants to leave uh, last, some last parting words for our viewers. And um, so what Nicholas wants to say is, you know, for us, we can believe, but uh, not believe to be an obsession. So don't be obsessed with it. We believe, we trust, but not, you know, um, manifest it into an obsession of some sort. So um, he also said that do not let uh, money, fame, um, lust and gossip ruin our lives um, with a positive mindset. Everything, you know, a any obstacles that we come across can be solved along the way. So definitely there are good and bad spirit medium damgi out there. If we were so unlucky to, you know, meet or engage with a not so good spirit medium and donkey. Nicholas's last advice to us is do not engage in any of the activities. So once again, I'd like to say a huge thank you on behalf of Nicholas um, and as well as his Sin Tua Bao Te Gong that uh, you've come with us on this journey to watch three parts of his story. The beginning, the challenge, and now the end, which is the journey of uh, Nicholas's uh, um, start as a um, Qi Tian Da Shen Dangi and how um, Bao Te Gong, the Xin Tua in Singapore, came about. It's funny how it all played out Broken dreams seldom get realized For me you were a part of life That escaped and left me outside
there 